as ready as we can be ready. So how many have not been? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't, I don't think any of us have been here ever. This is this is a completely okay. new stage. Does it mean we're all you don't want to miss stage, in my opinion. Stage left, right when you walk in, all the stuff that's ever been made here. Oh, really? Oh, I thank you. I got it. It's so nice of you. <laughs> you guys sit there. You guys all just wait there for a little bit. You gotta just go ahead and look around at the showcase. We got a showcase over here to your left. We got quite some history in there. Go ahead and take a minute or two. So we're just gonna help get this out too. Everybody's here. We are all here, sir. All right. Except for troublemaker back there. Get your butt over here. Basically, yeah. Uh, Tevin Sports was a standalone company for a long while. <laughs> About four or five years ago, uh, GI Sports purchased uh, Tevin. Uh, this is really a kind of a slight gallery of our historical uh, and existing markers. The company started off making these guns. Uh, there's actually three of them, uh, three different designs. That, you know, we they actually took one away, but they they're actually really firearms. They fire 22 uh, rounds. They're fully automatic. Is there uh, any way we could shoot that today? No, there is no way you can shoot that today. Okay. Uh, basically, this is a, right around the time they were doing it, this is about 25, 30 years ago. Uh, the law has changed and you could no longer make fully automatic weapons. Right. Right. So uh, Dennis Tipman Sr. was at the SHOT Show selling off the last few uh, serial numbers he, could, he was allowed to make legally. Uh, and somebody in the and somebody in the, the shot show, which had a paintball section at the time, uh, came to him and asked him to design a fully automatic paintball gun, which he did. Uh, if you talk to senior, senior will tell you he thought it was like a six months deal. Uh, he thought paintball would be coming and going about six months, but here we are, you know, thirty years later. Uh, so basically, we don't make these anymore. Uh, legally, we can't, but they're actually very much collector items and they do sell at a very, very high cost. And then, so basically that's what started our whole paintball side of business. Uh, we are a, a light assembly operation, we do some machining, I, but we'll take you through it. So there's, there's no, we're not a real heavy, you know, industrial complex or anything, but you'll at least see uh, how we put the, the markers together. Unfortunately, I think we might still be at lunch in the, in the assembly area, but we can swing past the and in the way back to you. Really, we're tipping sports. And so, I yeah, we're still at lunch. I'll do, we'll just have to. I'll just have to walk you through it. Uh, when I first came here about 13, 14 years ago, I Tipman only made like three models, like a you know, like a ninety, an A five, and you know, I think we did some you know pump action gun. Uh, we really didn't have a lot of a, a lot of variety in our finished goods. Uh, when the Tipman company sold to a venture capitalist company, they brought on a professional management team and I was part of that. I, we then expanded the line enormously and before that we had been running a very traditional uh, production, uh, what, what you call basically a, 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 pull, a, a push system where basically you're, you're just doing your job and pass it along to the next person. There's nothing wrong with that way of doing it. The automotive industry has done production like that for many, many years. But as it, what we ended up doing is selling the same amount of markers, but the variety was 
went up tenfold. So really the traditional line didn't suit us well at all. So we went back to and redid for cellular manufacturing. So we can uh, uh, schedule many factories within, the, within <laughs> production and lets us do a, uh, and lets us uh, basically fulfill a uh, customer, customer, de customer demand much more quickly than we would otherwise. So let's go to the handler. Somebody be a handler, please. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I won't rewind this, but I'll come back once we're actually assembling something and then you can film that. Assembly sales are just that. They're just a, a small group of people and the, the general concept is that you uh, you finish the, the product from start to finish in the cell and you test it. So you know if it's good or bad. Uh, each operation just continues to do it and pass it along. Uh, but you, for example, uh, it's really a what we call a pull system in that if this guy was way ahead and uh, from this guy he would just be able to do twice as much this would totally build up here and we would stop production until we got it is roughly get the same amount of work so that each time somebody completes something a marker is finished uh, if you have this guy doing twice as many as balancing your production balancing each uh, part of production. How many, how many people would work at this station? Uh, it all depends. We, we can, we've got that set up to be able to do it with one. I would be getting readings on velocity that was inaccurate. So we'd say, oh, the A5s are running you know, low in velocity. I would go and grab some, take them to the R&D lab, we'd fire some RB shear, paint through it, and the velocity would be fine. It was just that we'd have a bad batch of paint. So, I, and paint is expensive, as you as well know. So we opted to changing it to, for us to test uh, using a, basically molded balls that allows us to shoot the product and very consistently measure our velocity. I, the one downside to this is, it doesn't tell you if there's something in the gun that was a rag or something that was gonna break your paint. So. I, we still actually shoot paint through, not every gun, but audit it. Are we going to be able to shoot paint today? <laughs> uh, I would. You and Pat can sort something out if you so desire. So that it's, you got it set up so you shoot the ball and it recycles yes. itself and you just keep going. That's it. All right. So once the markers are being assembled and tested, uh, we go into a rack, get ready for packing. Now, one of the things about cellular manufacturing is the, if you're a purist, you try to do every single thing in the cell, you know, all the way through packing, etc. Well, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that in, in our application. So, anything that takes a whole lot of labor, we'll tend to break out. Uh, things like the cycling system. And we will put them through a thousand shot test uh, just to see if there's something that's yeah you know, that's failing at a few hundred shots. And then also every quarter we'll take every marker we do, every style of marker we do, and put it through a full battery of ASTM testing. Uh, we do a lot of these testings in here. And this is the number one shooting booth in the world right here. Is it? They have their own fire hose here. They have a, they have a little grinder down there to grind up the shells. Wow. They, have, they can squirt it all down. You can, I'm sorry, I'm still in your time to grind. No, no, okay. okay. So, you know, that's, we, we don't do as much real paint shooting as we used to, but that's what I still do. The, the different test rigs you see, this is a test rig that is part of ASTM testing where You've got to be able to uh, pressurize a marker up to 3,000 PSI without it blowing up. Well, of course, if it blows up at 3,000 PSI, you're in a bad trouble. So we built a, a closure that was capable of, of holding it and we can pressurize them. I, I think we might be the only company that does this test. I, we built this from the STM standard, but this is the, a, which you guys, you know, the, you guys are probably here, but this is, 
you suspend the marker on the edge, this spring is all specified, the strength of the spring, and you hit the gun while it's loaded and the seats will go off with the safety on. Uh, we, we do not ship a marker that fails that test, but I pretty much guarantee if you've got a speedball marker in your bag, it'll fail that test. Uh, we also have uh, a few of these, you'll see one outside. Uh, this is a rig where we put the, the appropriate type of cheeks on, we hold the marker, and then we program it to run either a thousand shot test or a hundred thousand shot test. I think this is D2, so when this thing is shooting, it's registering when it shoots versus the trigger pull, and it has a counter, it knows if it's stopped on that air. So this is a pretty stupid, no one has it anyway. Yeah. And we, when we're testing it, we test the marker under the worst conditions you can get. We'll, we'll screw the velocity screw all the way in, so the marker, I mean the rear bolt is getting slammed back into the back. Uh, obviously that's not the same as, uh, as when you're doing a pneumatic one, but on uh, the, the blowback designs, uh, we do it the absolutely worst it can be. Uh, you know, the velocity, when you measure the velocity on the marker, it, it, it points to usually uh, if you've got any issues. If you've got a problem, you're going to have a firing problem, you're going to have a, a velocity problem, you're going to have a, you know, a, a falling velocity, maybe it you know, falls if you pull the trigger too fast. Either way, velocity is a good indicator if you've got something wrong. I, so that's how you test it in the book. But if it, if it fails that test and the operator can't get to the root cause, then we pass it to our QC tech, which is James. Uh, James was out for a while and we are so glad to have him back. Uh, <laughs>
Uh, one of the things, you, the reason we're pressing the nuts in is, uh, is really for, for your benefit, because if you don't, whenever you lose it, you're losing that nut. So we like to press them in so that they always stay in here. And you know, you might still lose the screw, but hopefully you don't lose the nut. Well, I mean, after using it, the same one for 14 years, I have a fleet of them, one six of them that are all over 14 years old. Yeah. And they're great. And they still work. The finishes is not so great, but the, the rest of it is freaking great. The, the, the real hot, in an ideal world, we would anodize the receivers. But uh, because we die cast the receivers and uh, serialize it, uh, we put a serial number on it. As we put that serial number on, uh, a label for the box prints out uh, down here. So I'm lifting the whole thing out. Shit, I mean, I'm screwing it up. Oh, I'm screwing it up. It's okay, okay. All right, so this puts, this, you know, etches the serial number on the marker. Uh, we then put it into its box. When this prints out, it also sends a message to our printer and prints out. Uh, our labels, which has the serial number that is on the gun, uh, which lets us track it when we ship it, uh, etc. So, so it ends up looking like this, but it stops off looking. Basically like this. And it's just a rubber tube, we put a hole in it. And in actual fact, the, this design was kind of done with a, it was a James, the guy you just saw the tech come up with the idea of punching the hole in the side. Uh, there's a BB down in there. Once it gets let loose and the paint spits out, the BB goes past the hole and the paint comes out the, the side at a pretty high rate and forces it to. You don't have to worry about the BB no, so it's the, that's kind of what it, what it looks like, but I, you can see we, we, this is what we use, it's not really a BB, it's a small plastic ball, and we make sure it's wet before we go in so that it's sliding, and doesn't get stuck. So, I, unfortunately, we're just not running this today, so it's hard to give you a, a good vision of it. But we shrink wrap it, etc., and all that stuff here. We do a couple of different versions of it, one in a bag, and one in a tube. Uh, the reason we did the one in the tube is the mass merchants have that uh, every so often one can go off. And uh, the mass merchants. I wondered about like production in here. How many times are there accidents? I can see. Yeah, yeah. It's complete, but uh, you can see that they're, they're very realistic. I uh, they they work in the blowback design, so there is actually a kick when you fire, etc. I uh, it's it's going down very well in the marketplace. I uh, now it's time for us to start offering versions that are maybe a little cheaper than this. this is an expensive model uh, of airsoft to, to make. In a cellular concept, you can see there's a lot more pieces to this than there was in a paintball marker. But we still do the velocity check here and, and make sure everything's all right. We still do, uh, we still serialize it, we just do it in the cell. I, this is for Scotty Travis. Yes, Scotty yes. Travis. What? They're, they're not here today, they're at an event, I believe. They're, they're, they're on the way to the world. Yeah, there you go. Uh, there, there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the guys, they all have, uh, they all have uh, phones that have uh, earpieces, etc. They, you know, when a cop comes in, you, you know that's better than me. You know, to be honest, they can they can solve, you know, almost half of any problem just over the phone. Another half of what's left with sending parts to the person. And if they can't really fix it, we're comfortable fixing it, they can send it in and we'll fix it. Uh, we built a soundproof room so the guys can go in, the service techs can go in and test the gun without you know, blowing up some another tech is on the phone. Uh, and we, we look to turn around our, uh, our consumer level returns uh, in two days. So if it comes in, two days later we put it out. And we, we come that rid of it about 96% of the time. The only times we fail really is when somebody sends a gun in and we don't send a return address or 
or it's still a warranty issue and they don't send their credit card entry, they sure don't send their phone or something. But in general, we cover it if it's a uh, consumer sending a gun and we, we are very good at getting around in a few days. Uh, it's strange, we very rarely destroy a gun. Yeah. I mean, if, if, if somebody says they're going to nine times, I can't we can fix it. Yeah. Now this is where I, we're, we're, we're all short staffed today, you know, there's a few people on vacation, but uh, we have service techs here and some emails. Tim Run, Tim Klein, who would normally be sitting in that seat, is he just uh, walked out. Well, just, uh, 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 he, he manages that that service operation for us here in Fort Wayne. All right. We don't want you to answer Now, we, we used to be, when we were an independent tipman, we obviously shipped all our product directly from here. Uh, we had another location in Europe uh, that we shipped to the European market from. Uh, but once GI Sports Boys, they moved distribution to their New York show location. So we've got finished goods in here, but not that much, really just the stuff we make. Uh, I'm not going to say we never ship to consumers directly. the machine up with bars, turn it on and it goes, right? I'm not having to manually load a component into the machine. It doesn't take somebody to be here all the time. Now, so therefore the guy's job is to make sure that he's checking the product coming out of the end. We've got all the specs up in the board, all the gauges, everything. So he goes through and checks all the important sizes. And then if that's good, he moves on. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, we have two people running all these machines for that person. Now, we, we do not make uh, we do not make all of our machine components for you know for the very reasons I was extolling out there, but it also allows us, I uh, quite honestly, in the down season, to buy less, move more in house, so that I can keep my own machine shop busy. We call, we call it the Wasp. It's like the winged air, aerial shooting platform. So uh, this thing will shoot an invasive species of plants pesticides, like on the side of mountain cliffs in Hawaii. And uh, so, so we're hired by different people to uh, stop a very invasive species of plant. And instead of flying instead of flying real helicopters and with real people, yeah. they just get a drone and boom, boom, boom. That's, That's bad. Uh, are you talking to this one? Susan, I'm <laughs> you get us, I tell you what, uh, Be careful what one million wish. views at ION. I let you fly. Million and I, One million views. That's all it's gonna take. Hey, Sexton, you should take these babies to uh, Ion and give them, give them a try. Heck yeah, I think we could do that. Ooh, this could be fun. That's the oh, new, we got it's the Raider, right? Yeah, it's called the Raider. Yep. All mechanical. All mechanical. Mechanical loader. A uh, little. Oh, that's cool. Clean out your gun. Heck yeah. And then back in the QC area, we're, we're QC testing them now for field testing. So. Give them a try. Awesome. So Ooh. these are Ooh. new toys. Prototype, like yeah. not. They're not. There's nothing. Ah. In, nothing out in the market. We don't gotta duct tape them up. No, no. Just <laughs> let, let, let them rip. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, you found something else over there, real quick. What's this? I'll help you load your mags real quick for all your TMC friends. Ah, pretty good. Pretty good. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. We can't take this. Huh? 
Hey guys, what's going on? Tony from Lomo Paintball. Check us out online or in store. Lomo Paintball.com.